Hi, I'm Edward Funk, and I've written a book called Loretta and Me. I knew Loretta Young the last 10 years of her life. Uh, I remember the first day that I met her. Uh, I was a little apprehensive. Uh, it was an interview to see if we could work together on her biography. So after sitting in my car for a few seconds or whatever, taking deep breathing exercises, I went to the door. And what I didn't realize when I walked into that door was how guarded Loretta had been for the last 60 years of her life. And I certainly didn't anticipate how quickly I would become her confidant. Uh, within a matter of just a few weeks, I had my own key to the house. Uh, it didn't take much longer and I became uh, an escort for her to several events. Uh, now if it was going to be a big deal, uh, Loretta would get out the, the diamonds and the emeralds. She'd select one of her Jimmy Gallinos gowns and I'd drive the Rolls Royce. I remember the first time uh, going to one of these parties. We walked in and there was Kirk Douglas uh, standing there with a couple other men and as we're walking by Loretta said, Kirk, you know Ed Funk. And then she waltzes off to, you know, someplace else. And of course, Kirk did know Ed Funk. Uh, but I learned quickly how, how to handle that situation. Uh, what I remember most about that night was how strange Nancy Reagan looked. And when I got Loretta alone, I said, Loretta, uh, Nancy Reagan's head looks too big for her body. And she said, well, really, she said, her body's too small for her head. She said, how this happens is, one, she's dieted herself down, uh, so she's not in proportion, but two, see, if she had, had she been a vain movie star like me, she'd have floor to, uh, ceiling to floor mirrors, and she could see exactly how she looks. She probably does her makeup sitting at a little uh, makeup table, and she just sees herself from, like the shoulders on up, and she doesn't realize that her big hair throws everything out of proportion. So, well, another event, we were in New York, and Loretta was going to make a presentation uh, at the Waldorf Astoria. So, you know, an hour or so before that, it didn't, didn't take me any time to get dressed. How long does it take for a man to put on a tuxedo? Uh, so I went up and waited in the living room of Loretta's suite. I mean, she was up high. I was in a more modest part of the hotel. Uh, she was throwing what I would call a queen of the silver screen fit. The big problem was she didn't like the arrangement of the mirrors in her bathroom. She had called somebody and he came up and he attached some like extension mirrors. Uh, those really didn't satisfy her either. And after he left, she said to me, these people don't know how to deal with someone like me. And I thought to myself, well, who would? But an hour later, we were in an elevator going up to the ballroom, uh, and Kitty Carlisle was on one side of Loretta, Tony Randall on the other side, both about six inches from her face, studying her face. And I kind of understood why, uh, how she got her face made up and all that stuff was really important. Um, Loretta had been a very close friend to Jean Louis and his wife, Maggie. Uh, John was a noted uh, Hollywood designer. Uh, a lot of people remember the dress that Marilyn Monroe wore to saying, Happy Birthday, Mr. President. That was one of John's. Uh, and after his wife Maggie died, you know, a few years later, Loretta realized how senile John was becoming. So uh, she realized she needed to take some responsibility for him. And after a few months, uh, she also realized, uh, trying to deal with all the financial stuff, it would just be simpler if they got married. So, then they bought a house in Palm Springs. One of the reasons being, uh, where to put John's furniture that he was so fond of. So I guess if you have enough money, you can do things like that. Uh, now, I had met Loretta's three sisters, as well as her two sons, and they were all very welcoming, and they... Uh, participated in the biography, but it'd be a long time before I'd meet the daughter Judy. That's because there had been an estrangement between Loretta and Judy, and it revolved around a, a book that Judy was writing, uh, basically about her being the secret baby of Loretta and Clark Gable. Uh, 
but it also turned out to become a Mommy Dearest book. Loretta made no public comment at the time, but she told me it was really the most painful period of her life. Seven months later, uh, Loretta reached out to, to begin a reconciliation, and Judy accepted. Uh, but afterwards, Loretta said it was really not like her TV movie, Christmas Eve, where everyone fell into each other's arms. It was just the beginning. She said the hurt had run too deep for both her and Judy. Uh, let's get back to some name dropping. Uh, I remember an event at the Palm Springs uh, Convention Center. It was a tribute to Frank Sinatra. And uh, I was at the same table with Loretta. Uh, Bob Hope and his wife Dolores came walking up and Frank Sinatra was at the next table. When he saw the Hopes, he, he came over. Now, Frank looked pretty good, but he kind of shuffled like an old man. Uh, when he got to the Hopes, he said hello and nice things to say, and then he shuffled back. And then uh, Bob said to his wife Dolores, who was that? And she said, Sinatra. And I kind of realized at this point, you know, this generation is winding down. But, but I gave him a lot of points for being out there and still trying. Now, at the time of Loretta's third uh, wedding anniversary with Jean Louis, she wrote a note to her sister Sally, and she said it had been the happiest three years of her life. Uh, I really felt good to hear that because I think really in her efforts to take care of Jean, she really had the opportunity to get out of herself. Now, there's a lot more to this book, both fun and poignant, so I hope you'll enjoy it.